your character have any inkling that her mother has a secret that she's not aware of? Uh, well, I think she's definitely discovering it right now. <laughs> I don't think that she knew at the beginning of the pilot, but, you know, I think that she, over the course of the season, becomes increasingly aware of, you know, the masks and the lies and the secrets that everyone is, uh, everyone has. So shooting the phone call scene, did you have someone doing the voice on the other line, or was it just an uh, assistant director? It was our lovely second AD who uh, read all of those killer sequences for me, and she did an amazing job. But I actually didn't get to hear the killer's voice until I watched the pilot, which was uh, which is pretty cool, actually, to kind of finally hear the, the voice that they had chosen. I think it was a good choice. Your character has a a certain innocence there, and do you think that that is going to sort of like hold throughout the season, or is it going to evolve? Um, I think that it's going to really evolve, because I think Emma starts out this season as very much an insecure, um, confused high schooler, you know, like she's not quite sure of her friend group, or if she's made the right choice, and who she's friends with, and over the course of the season, as this killer raises the stakes by constantly threatening her and her friends, she develops like a real kind of badassness, you know? Like she like responds to his threats and rises to them. And so over the course of the season, you really get to see her kind of grow into herself um, and become much more like Sydney Prescott, who I see as like an incredibly strong, confident woman. Um, and so it's exciting to see that change in a character. Is there a lot of choreography in that phone call scene? Like, you have to be on this mark when he says this line? Yeah, we shot that whole thing in, uh, in one long take, which is pretty impressive, considering it's six pages and spans a whole lower floor of the house. Um, and so it was the director, Tim Hunter, for that episode, uh, and I both just kind of took off lunch one day and like went and figured it out together so we could like show the crew something that was actually like put together and good. Um, but it's really exciting to get to do something like that in one long continuous shot instead of breaking up into all of those individual scenes. Um, you really get to carry through the intensity in a way that is hopefully reflective of the final product. I've noticed you're very active on social media promoting screen. Is this new for you or were you always? No, this is definitely new for me. I, uh, I was, I've not always been super happily present on social media and I think it's just because, you know, I think it's uh, something you either kind of like definitely gravitate towards or just like, oh, I'm okay. But it's been interesting learning how to use Twitter in a way that like works for you. Well, it is a job. Right? It is, it's yeah. It's now part of. It is now part of, uh, of being an actress. So, are you a fan of the horror genre? Have you seen yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've I've always been a fan of, of horror. Um, I watched a lot of horror movies before I ever watched the Scream movies, and I think the Scream movies were so exciting precisely because I had seen them horror. Because you know, obviously they play on all of the stereotypes and conventions of the horror movies, and you know, especially if you have watched a lot of horror movies, the payoff is that much greater. Um, but yeah, I think the first horror movie I ever watched was It by Stephen King when I was 13. That was a brutal introduction. What are your favorites? <laughs> My favorite is definitely Let the Right One In, the original. Um, I think that's an amazing one. Any others? I love The Shining. I love Rosemary's Baby. I love... I actually really love Cabin in the Woods. I think that's actually a pretty crazy horror movie. I just saw that recently and I was like, wow, I like it. <laughs> Um, yeah. do, you, do you see any similarities to some of those classic horror films in this series, or is it kind of a new thing unto itself? How they do things? Uh, I mean, obviously, this is paying direct homage to all of the screen franchise. Um, but I think that what makes this TV series so unique is the fact that you just have time. Like, in a movie, once the killing starts, it's just a bloodbath, and there's no looking back. But with our show, you really have this crazy opportunity to explore what's happening to the characters when people die, and in between the killings. You get to see like how these characters respond to like this really new, unsafe world. And also, you know, you just have this opportunity to really fall in love with these people as you watch them going through this horrific thing, um, which I, I think will be exciting for the audience.